Hi there, and uh, welcome to Your Own Account, which is a new podcast brought to you by Kudos. Uh, on my left is Nicole Slowey, Hello. and on my right is Sam Cox. Hello. I think the first question is, why are we here? Um, podcast, I guess, is the, uh, the, the starting point. Everyone's mm-hmm. doing a podcast these days, mm-hmm. so we're uh, jumping in, yeah. But I, I think the point is that... Um, there is so much going on in our industry and there's so much yep. going on in the sector. We are, are in a position where we uh, deal with and speak to all of the different points of the supply mm. chain. Um, but uh, but ultimately, there is, you know, there is a flexible economy yep. out there and, uh, you know, issues affect everyone who, who operates within it. So we thought it would be a good idea to speak to the people that we know, get some really good insight about... Mm. People's opinions, people's views, you know, um, obviously the, you know, the, the flexible economy is subject to relentless change, yep. relentless legislation. Yeah. yeah. No, it's never, uh, never the same uh, situation as it is year to year. So uh, there's never a dull moment. No, exactly. But no, I think it's uh, useful to do this type of thing because obviously we serve, you know, people are at the heart of everything that we do. So the contractor population in the UK yeah. is, is is large, mm-hmm. um, and uh, there's a lot of benefit to uh, communicating message uh, to them. But I think you're right in terms of the uh, the connections that we have across the market. Mm-hmm. Being able to enter into discussion, I think it's uh, maybe a bit of a lofty goal for us. But actually, there's value to be had uh, both from a uh, you know a contractor perspective and then the wider market that, that serves those contractors as well. Hmm. Yeah, and I think the thing is as well is it gives us and our followers a really good opportunity to hear those unique perspectives and people's own account of their view of the market, the things that are happening, the challenges that they face, where they see the opportunities lie mm-hmm. um, and really give people also a chance to meet the kind of the people behind the people these behind, brands yeah, and exactly. all the companies that are in the um, landscapes that we operate in. So. I it's guess all very yeah. exciting. Yeah, uh, and uh, you know, a, a good starting point is the people behind our brand, so the people yeah. behind Kudos. So, <laughs> well, I think we should start with you. You were going to yeah. throw that in my direction, <laughs> weren't you? But no, no I, I think uh, I think we're going to put you on the spot first. Okay. Oh, lustrous leader. Mm-hmm. Who are you? Where you come from? Did you say luscious? Illustrious. <laughs> Let's go with luscious. Yeah, a lu- luscious, illustrious leader. Okay. <laughs> Weird <Yeah>. focus. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to know? Uh, who are you? Where are you from? <laughs> uh, Said Bailey. From uh, from Leicester, the Leicester area now, but mm-hmm. uh, obviously originally heralded like you from the south of England. Mm-hmm. You is very much uh, more uh, respectable than mine from Bow in London, mm. um, whereas the you know the mean street of Milton Keynes, my mm. uh, historic stomping ground, not quite the same amount of uh, street cred there. <laughs> um, it's, it's getting there. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, yeah. On, it's on the up, there. on the up. But um, but no, no. So I've uh, been uh, with Kudos for over twenty years now. Um, so it's been an interesting. <laughs> Interesting uh, time, you know, the business has changed a lot, the market's changed a lot, a huge amount has changed, obviously, yeah. the, the world has changed a lot, but um, but no, I mean, it's uh, it's, it's been great, it's, mm. it's, it's uh, been great to be part of the journey, and uh, you've been, uh, you know, along uh, a yeah, similar road. Very similar, yeah, so I was uh, a couple of years behind uh, you, so not quite past my 20-year uh, yardstick just yet. But uh, but you were ne- nearly at the 20 years. Yeah, so 18 years, well, mm. 18 years in April, actually, so uh, I was probably undercooking the couple of years behind you, yeah. um, but... But, uh, but yeah, sort of a similar sort of story. Been uh, been a QDOS man and boy. Joined straight after university and have grown with the business, but also we've grown with the industry as well. Mm. You know that 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 sort of evolution across uh, across both recruitment and the contracting space in general has mm. been marked for the uh, you know the last twenty years or so. Um, and uh, yeah, we've for our sins been there every step of the way, really, haven't we? And I suppose before before we move over to to, to Nicole, uh, when did it um, stop becoming a a job and start becoming a career? When did it stop being a stopgap uh, job? Uh, interesting question, really. Mm. Um, I'd probably say um, it wasn't until I'd sort of moved into the insurance-specific side of it. Mm. Um, so when uh, I'd started getting, you know, the insurance qualifications, I'm a uh, chartered insurance underwriter. Um, and, yeah, starting on that journey was probably the point where I went, oh, OK, I'm probably going to have to concentrate on this now. Um, yeah. You know, the first first few years, you know, working in a job, getting to know the world of work mm. a bit more, um, but yeah, when uh, I realised I was probably not going to be a professional footballer, um, then uh, I just sort of switched focus at that I realised that a long time before you did. <laughs> yeah. What, re- realised about yourself or no, realised you... about me? Oh, <laughs> I came still a lot later. I'm still there. Did we, did we realistically think that we were going to be footballers at any point? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. did. I, I, yeah, when I was like 24, 25. Yeah, I, yeah. I, was, I, I probably uh, gave up the ghost 26, 27, <laughs> something like but that. But did any of you actually play football? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, really good. Yeah? Yeah, really good. Um, 
Don't you think football doesn't count? You're doing all that. Oh, then in no. that context. <laughs> <laughs> then no, not for an actual team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about you? When did you give up on your uh, footballing goals? In fairness, actually, I did try the full football thing. So I was partially in the girls' football team at school. You've never told us this. Yeah. yeah. And how do you mean partially? Well, I did like a football academy thing. <laughs> well, when I was at school, we didn't have no, <laughs> we didn't have a girls' team and a boys' team. But there were a couple of girls at school who were really, really good at football. Really? So they got to be in the boys' team. And then mm. I didn't get to be in the boys' team because I wasn't good enough. But I did like football academy stuff, and I liked football from a really, really long yeah. age. So well, you are a big, you're, you're a big football yeah, fan. Aren't I you? am. Yeah, I do like it. So Celtic. Celtic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, mum and dad just take my sister and I to like football academy stuff, like on school holidays. But we we're just never very good. Oh no, my so football never got that came far. from a charity shop. <laughs> <laughs> you actually died in them. So, um, so you, you've been at Kudos for actually quite a long time now, yes. haven't you? So I'm, weirdly, all of our anniversaries are in April, albeit yours is kind of under dispute, but, um, so I'm 10 yeah. years this coming April. Yeah. So that is l the quickest 10 years that I could ever imagine anyone think of. Um, so moved to Leicester yeah. from Glasgow, big change there. Um, but yeah, it's the, like you said, the company is going through so much change in that time and our industry is going through so much change in that time that we've really had a unique opportunity that lots of people don't get and yeah. that we get to grow with the business and then through our progression in our careers then get to the point where we get to mould and shape and take the business forward from a strategic perspective, which is obviously been really exciting. I think that's, you know, going back to that question about when it stops becoming a stopgap job and starts yeah. becoming a career, it's where, you know, for me it's when decisions that you make you can see having an impact. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, which, you know, is great. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, but you've you have had a professional career before Kudos. So I did, yeah. Like, I had a... me and you. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, hold on. My film studies degree is a very <laughs> important part of my... No, uh... I had a big girl job yeah. before I moved from In Scotland. In a big city. In a big city mm. for a big bank. Mm. Worked in corporate banking. Um and do you know what? I actually really enjoyed it. Did um, you? Yeah, it was at a really weird time. I started in the bank and then three days later, um, Lehman Brothers went bust. Mm. So Have you my... just described the plot of The Wolf on Wall Street there? Yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> but genuinely, like, I started and it was a couple of days later that that happened. So mm. my induction into the world of finance and having a proper job was probably quite bizarre. It was a baptism, baptism yeah, of Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, but I loved it and I really, really enjoyed it. And mm. that sort of set me on the path to get to where I am now. And do you think that's had an impact on uh, your um, outlook at Qdos in terms of having that background, you know, because a lot of people, are, a lot of people who we work with have, have very much kind of joined from A-levels from a, yeah. from a university. Do you think that's given you a different perspective? On yeah, it? massively. So I had a huge amount of exposure from a really young age. So I started working in the bank when I was 18 mm -hmm. and I was there from when I was like 18 until I was 22. And it was all commercial and corporate organisations. So one of the biggest transactions that I actually worked on, the first payment that we sent under the facility was for like £40 million. Pounds. Yeah. So it was like dealing with big corporate businesses, yeah. working with really impressive people in the bank. So I got to learn so much for them and I worked with a really, really good team who let me have as much exposure as I actually no, wanted. Good. So mm. having that, what was really, really corporate experience, but that general ability to build up my own business and commercial acumen by yeah. having exposure to commercial and corporate mm. clients was amazing. Like it was brilliant experience and it has... It made going from working for a really big corporate to then coming to Leicester and working for what was at the time a family run business. Yeah. Oh, it was a massive like it was a massive, mate. massive step change and the freedom and the flex flexibility that we had and yeah. that we continue to have was one of the biggest things because there was obviously if you're working for a big bank, there's so much red tape, there's so much bureaucracy. You don't have a, the level of autonomy that you would probably want sometimes. Yeah. Um but it means that I have got built up a lot of experience over the last kind of 15 plus years of my career where I've seen both sides of working for a big business and for a small company and then back which to a big business again. Yeah. Now, yeah. <laughs> and I guess, yeah, which uh, has probably served you well in the long yeah. run in terms of coming back into that. Uh, yeah, into that role. And in terms of what your uh, kind of day, your, your day looks like now, so obviously mm -hmm. you focus on the, 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 the commercial clients, the commercial development, the relationships that we have with, uh, with our commercial clients. What, mm. 
What does a day typically look like for you? Um, it is a, a varied, uh, varied bag, really. Mixed bag, not varied bag, mixed bag. <laughs> um, so really a, a day can uh, move from, um, you know, looking at um, service issues, um, dealing with clients who um, uh, use us for IR35 assessments and consultancy services, um, and, you know, as part of the uh, the overall commercial remit, I look after the uh, the relationships that we have there. Um, it, I can give um, relatively detailed IR35 and tax mm. um, status advice um, on one call, be speaking about um, insurance arrangements for professional risks um, on another mm -hmm. and then looking at um, commercial schemes um, for, for contractors via intermediaries on another. So yeah. it's uh, yeah, it is, it is a it's broad varied. broad day but uh, no, we've got a, uh, an excellent team and uh, yeah, really the uh, the day-to-day -day, um, the, the guys back in the office really do um, do a huge amount and uh, really a very solid foundation that we uh, build our business around. Yeah. Always has been really. We've been a, a people industry for a long time. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's uh, and it gives us that it's, it makes the day interesting, doesn't it? Because mm. I, I guess for for all three of us, we all um, have that IR thirty five aspect yeah. to the, yeah. the tax aspect to uh, to our uh, our day job, our expertise, and so on. Which um, yeah, that's always interesting. There's, mm. always, there's always a lot going on there. Yeah. But um, outside of work, mm. uh, you know, how do you fill your time? So what's uh, what what keeps you entertained? Um, so uh, I was going to say I've got a wife and a young daughter. Daughter's not that young anymore. She's no, uh, she, she's sixteen, but uh, crazy. Uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, scary. Yeah. Genuinely, <laughs> genuinely <laughs> scary. So uh, without re revealing too much about our uh, history, then uh, obviously you and I went to the same school mm -hmm. um, uh, historically, and now both of our children go to the same school that yeah. we met with at some of the which, same uh, teachers, which is, with uh, some bizarre. of the same teachers, yeah. which is uh, yeah, very uh, very strange. Mm. But, you two uh, really are that old. Yeah. yeah, 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 we uh, we are. <laughs> um, but no, the uh, yeah, the uh, so in terms of uh, personal life, um, I'm uh, always been a, a massive uh, fan of films. Um, so one of those teachers that we're talking about um, is a film studies teacher. Um, did film studies at school yeah. and uh, at university. Um, and daughter and wife are uh, you know massively into uh, to films as well. So that's all a family hobby. Um, so yeah, you have a, like an encyclopedic knowledge of uh, of film um, and your DVD collection dvd collection before dvds were defunct was uh, <laughs> absolutely yeah. weird to be honest yeah no no <laughs> really, really did waste a huge amount of my yeah. disposable income as a younger man on dvds <laughs> um, which uh, yeah was but was, impressive was, was impressive it, impressive, yeah, <laughs> impressive. Um, favorite but, film uh, Oh, I mean, really, that is a uh, gun to the head type uh, situation. Typical, but yeah. I would, uh, I, I, the default answer is always uh, the Godfather. Godfather. Yeah, I think it's uh, one of the most important pieces of um, pop cultural, mm -hmm. um, you know, art. I watched, the last, yeah. I watched it again recently. Oh, really? On the plane, yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, really enjoyed Just it. Just part one or part two as well? Just, I watched half of part two on the way back, but then yeah. fell asleep. But, oh, okay. um, you need, need three or four watches of part two. Plot's yeah. complicated. You need yeah. to figure out what's going on. Yeah, it's a great film. So, film. What's your kind of passion? What would you... Uh... Does wedding count? Yeah, uh, definitely. It's cultural. <laughs> it is cultural. Um, no, I am a kind of big food and wine person, but hobby-wise, did start yoga at the beginning of the year, which mm -hmm. I've got quite into, which is surprising because it's never something I've I don't heard. understand what yoga is, really. It's lying down and breathing people, funny, isn't it? people class it as exercise. <laughs> there are different mm. types of yoga. So you get some yoga where... Have you ever done yoga? Nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> I fell over once. And, uh... <laughs> we can make that happen. We can make a team yoga class happen. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the, there's lots of different types of practice and some of them it's more meditation and breathing exercises. Some of it's more about holding poses for a really long time and some of it's more about when having... you say like, pose? Yeah, like being in a particular position. Just uh, like, contorted into a position. Not quite like child's pose is like quite a basic... What? Yoga pose, child's pose. No, all uh, child alien. Yeah. You need to explain this this point. Child's pose. Yeah, so you basically are like on your knees and you push your hips back so that your bum is basically on your feet and you put your arms out in front of you. It's very it's very comfortable pose. It's a good stretch. Okay. But anyway, um, <laughs> so but yeah, so then there's like flow type yoga, which is all about moving and breathing at the same time and a little bit of meditation and yep. all that jazz. Um, I do a mixture of more of the movie about ones. I'm not very good with the meditation ones. And do you do, uh, you go to classes? Yes, I go to classes. And then do it? I can do it at home too. At home, on, yeah. yeah. Do you so need a licence for that? or uh, just <laughs> <laughs> No licence to operate, oh, okay. no. And it's also not like cycling to... proficiency no, no, or anything no, like that? No, okay. no, so do a couple of classes a week, do mm. a little bit of practice at home. Mm. Um, Have you ever done that hot yoga thing? 
No, I wouldn't cope with that actually. I don't like it when it's too warm when I'm doing mm. yoga. So to go into something that's like 40 degrees and. I think yeah. that would be smelly yoga. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. Mm. But yeah, no, I like it for both the fitness side of things and also a little bit of the well being, wellness, still calm mind. Yeah, which is an important uh, consideration yeah. in this day and age, isn't it? it in is. terms of that, um, yeah, mental wellness and mm. yeah. what do you do to kind of clear your head and um, apart from films, the wine thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it, honestly, it is uh, it is down to lifestyle. So you know, trying to get a bit of exercise, um, fresh air, eating healthily, um, all the things that I fail to do on a regular basis. But yeah. when I do them more, I feel better feel about better. myself. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's almost as if uh, looking after yourself uh, makes you uh, generally feel better. Mm. But, uh, yeah, but yeah, how about you? Me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the question? I don't know. What did you ask me? Uh, <laughs> what, the, do you, uh, what do you do wellness-wise? Yes. Uh, wellness-wise. Yeah. Uh, I um, I like walking the dog. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoy that. He's a good um, lad. Yeah. Um, I, I do... I have tried to get back into jogging. Mm-hmm. Um, in, <laughs> How's that uh, going? First thing in the morning. It's been going okay. You've Obviously, been doing all right the last uh, couple of months, yeah, Back you? into the couch to 5K. Yeah. I just hate... Running, I yeah, hate, uh, I hate, it's um, genuinely unpleasant. Yeah, yeah. I, I, re- I, it's one of those things that I do. You get that um, sense of achievement afterwards. I feel good in the day after I've had a run, but yeah. during in that, yeah, fifteen, twenty, thirty, you know, thirty minutes of actual running, mm. I hate it. Yeah, I can't do that. So kudos to you for actually <laughs> being that determined to stick through when you dislike it that much because I just dislike it and go. No, thank you. A hundred percent. participating. Worst thing is if you get halfway round and then realise, why am I doing this? And then you've think. got no other choice but uh, to run I mean, home. It's, yeah, <laughs> and it's uh, it's one of those things. You really, uh, it's such a the mental strength is mm. insane that you need. Yeah. I, don't, I don't. I you know, absolute hats off to anyone who does marathons. Yeah. Half marathons. Yeah. Mm. But they must enjoy it, so I don't know. It's, I don't, I don't know. even I know if people themselves. do. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's, yeah, it's self-abuse. Like, you shouldn't be doing things like marathons. That's madness. Mm. Yeah, it's more with those as well. It's like just as much of a mental test as yeah. it is a physical test. Neither of those things is pleasant. Mm. So, no, no, no it's not great. Yeah, but uh, one one thing I have enjoyed doing, which I would recommend to people, is um, learning a language. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I yeah. yeah. That's been that's been great. It's been you know I kind of. Um, one evening a couple of years ago drunkenly decided to book an Italian <laughs> lesson because I was going to go to Italy and yep. I thought why not you know obviously mm-hmm. you know, so much culture the godfather wine yep. um, uh, and I did and then sort of didn't cancel it and did this lesson mm-hmm. and then I've been doing it ever since ever, ever since then and uh, yeah I've, I, I enjoy it immensely so back to the podcast then yeah mm. what are each of you most looking forward to about this kind of process that we're going to go into and speak to lots of really interesting and exciting industry people. Um, but I suppose that's actually the point is, like we said, we'll be here and we'll be talking all things happening in the market and happening in the landscape. But one of the key things that we want to get out of this is obviously bringing in friends of Kudos, mm. people in the industry who have lots of insight and knowledge and expertise to share. So based on all of that, what are you each most looking forward to in the world of podcasting? Um, I think for, for me, it's that there's a real opportunity for there to be um, a little bit more cohesion across the other uh, different elements of the uh, of the market. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, that is the, uh, the the case when any, uh, whenever anything changes, I think people have a tendency to to look after themselves. And there's been lots of decisions made by businesses and contractors to a certain extent over the last few years around IR35 reforms, um, but also just the general changes in the world around COVID and Brexit and you know the new world of work that, that we're in now. Um, and I think there is an opportunity to bring all, all parties mm. together. So yeah. that, that would be the workers, the agencies, the hiring organisations, yeah. payroll companies, and that infrastructure that really supports the contingent labour um, market in the uh, in the UK. It's not that those par- parties are working against each other, but I think there are certain key points that we'll hit on over the next few months as we're doing more of these yeah. that'll, um, that I think will genuinely help bring bring some people together. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that, that I think would be a good, no, good that's objective. A good point. That's, a, that's a good point. And, yeah. it's, uh, and it's interesting for us because we kind of do sit in that position where we are touching all of yeah. those different, aspects, yeah. you know, th- those different elements, which is pretty unique, really. Mm. Um, but it is, you know, uh, so we, so we hear all of the the sides of the story. Everyone wants the same thing ultimately. Everyone wants a flexible economy that, um, you know, is is growing and yeah. uh, is res- ultimately is respected. You know, yeah. and um, uh, should be treasured by, uh, by, mm. by by the government and so on. But um, I think for me, 
the, uh, it is uh, a case of that you know there are so many um, great people in the industry. You know, yes. we we have conversations every day with people who have so much kind of experience. Um, you know, so many valued points, so much in, you know yeah. intelligence, yeah. and uh, you know it's often we we, we, we want, really want to promote that. We want to publicise the views of people that we speak to on a daily basis. Definitely. Um, and uh, as I said, they're all very you know everyone's very supportive of uh, of, of the economy, the flexible economy, yeah. the industry growing. So yeah. yeah, how about you? I would say the thing that I'm most looking forward to is the people. Like I love hearing people's stories. I love hearing what people are passionate about. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested in hearing their perspectives, both in the context of the market, but also what their business is doing, their journey in mm, business as yeah. well. So I think a lot of what mm. we want to do is find out who the people are and what drives them. So yeah. I'm just looking forward to really getting into some of the nitty gritty with mm. some of Friends of Kudos and beyond. Yeah, I know some interesting, innovative people. Yeah, so yeah, it'd be good exactly. to uh, dive into a bit of detail with them, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 Yeah, and then three of us get to spend loads of time together. Yeah, <laughs> don't see enough of each other, do we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you can uh, catch us in a couple of weeks when we'll uh, be back with uh, some guests, um, which is exciting. Yeah. But uh, for now, if you uh, subscribe to our socials and uh, our YouTube channel uh, for immediate updates, and uh, we'll see you next time. See you soon. Bye.